Hey, Joey Star here. Got my buddy Greg. Have you seen another videos? We're here once again for Star Rock, where it's always about rock music. Tonight, Greg and I are going to go see That Metal Show's annual Christmas Bash at Dingbats in Clifton, New Jersey. That Metal Show was a talk show that ran on VH1 Classics for about seven years or so. Hosted by comedians Don Jameson, Jim Florentine, and the legendary radio personality and music historian Eddie Trunk. Really, my first exposure to watching this show was catching it on TV, hanging out with this character over here. And every single episode that I watched after that was at his house as well. It kind of became a weekly routine for us. Now, I already knew who Eddie Trunk was from his work on WNEW FM and also for his Metal Mania show that it was also on VH1 Classic, which, you guessed it, I watched at his house. <laughs> So since I became a fan by association, Greg, why don't you briefly tell us what turns you on to that metal show and a little bit about your relationship with watching the show. My whole thing coming about was seeing it on VH1. And of course, with the hosts, you have Don Jameson, Jim Florentine, and of course, the legendary Eddie Trunk. What more can you say? And I really enjoyed the show because it gave a talk show setting that had all the musical guests of hard rock, heavy metal there together in a weekly episodal series on VH1 and you got to see our music heroes not only in a talk show format but also having special musical guests as well. Now, me personally my favorite highlights of the show included to Greg's point these amazing musical guests the who's who celebrity heavy metal guests you know, Rob Zombie, Zach Wild, Metal Mike I mean you just name it they were hot at the time they ended up on the show. The interviews with them was just that alone was worth the price of admission. Second feature that I really liked a lot was Stump the trunk which basically they would have someone from the audience ask a question usually like a tough question related to heavy metal trivia to see if they can stump Eddie and they won a prize for that right if mm -hmm. they did yeah right. but I tell you right now like 90% of the time he knew it. like you think he's stumbling he's like uh, and then he would get it he's just that amazing and of course this box of junk herself Jennifer Gottlieb definitely didn't hurt the show at all <laughs> what were uh, a couple of your favorite features well of course seeing Jen during stump the trunk and the funnier things about that whole segment is to see Eddie get very flustered mm. when trying to answer the questions because Don and Jim would poke fun at him yes. and instigate to see whether he can get the questions right or wrong. So that was the real funny part. And that was my favorite parts of Stump the Trunk. And not only Joey watching the show with me, but other friends would try to see if I knew the answers before Eddie would answer them. That's true. I'm glad you brought that up. The other thing that I'm glad you brought up was how Don and Jim would pick on Eddie. It gave you this kind of personal sense as if you were hanging out with them. Like they were your buddies, poking fun at each other. I mean, the way friends are, the way he and I are, we hang out with our friends. So having watched the show as much as we have, I think it's pretty clear that we hold these three gentlemen, these hosts in high regard. And in fact, Greg and I were fortunate enough to meet each of these hosts on separate occasions. We met Don Jameson at one of his gigs in this small, intimate venue. Was that close to Queens? That mm -hmm. was. It was a while ago, but we met him. We had to spend like a good 15 minutes or so speaking with him. It was cool. We met Jim Florentine at this club, almost like a semi-outdoor club in Napanock. And after he had his set, you know, we were able to talk to him. We didn't spend quite as much time with him, maybe just a couple of minutes because it was a pretty busy place. But it was still pretty cool. And Eddie Trunk, I seen him for last. We met, actually met him before we met the other two. Eddie wasn't performing. He was just at a table at the annual chiller convention in New Jersey, meeting fans as opposed to putting on a performance. I'm going to say that of meeting the three, out of our experiences meeting each of these guys, my personal favorite was meeting Eddie for a number of reasons. Number one, there was a certain room that had a couple, a number of rock-related guests at the chiller theater. We got there a little early into that room, so it wasn't busy. We spent a lot of time with Eddie, like at least like 45 minutes, if not close to an hour. And it was really like one-on-two, -on -two, him and the two of us for almost that entire higher time and we we're having such a casual fun conversation it was like we were hanging out with a buddy from high school honestly there was some music stuff we spoke some other stuff there's a little story that i don't feel like i should tell in a official capacity like this but under private circumstances i'm more happy to share if i ever meet eddie again i'm definitely going to share with him see if he remembers i'm sure he will so great out of our experiences meeting the three which was your favorite and why wow that's a good question <laughs> out of all three not to take anything away from eddie because eddie is one of my personal idols. It would probably be either Jim or Dom because we had that intimate setting with them during their stand-up routines. Okay. That to me 
stands out and was really, really cool. And to his point, because you know we saw him at completely different times in completely different venues, and I gotta say that each of them, both Don and Jim, on their own, had great stand-up sets, I thought. Both highly entertaining, clever, funny, and meeting them, I would say they were as friendly as Eddie, but they were still friendly, they were still personable, they weren't standoffish, they were very approachable, down to earth when they spoke to you. I think out of the three of them, Jim's a little more on the quiet side, being yeah. fans but he was still really cool. Yeah, I agree. So what we're doing tonight is we're going to head over to Clifton. We're going to meet up with some friends. We're going to check out some bands. I don't know a lot about them other than I saw the names. One's a Motley Crue tribute. Another one's a Judas Priest tribute. The other two, I don't know what their story is, but I look forward to seeing all four. Of course, that metal show. And then afterward, as always, we're going to go grab a bite to eat somewhere and we're going to tell you about our experience. So we'll check you later. Definitely. We're going to have a fun time.
So show's done and we're at our favorite diner, State Line Diner, Ramsey, New Jersey. A couple of thoughts about the show I'd like to share with you. And our buddy Greg, who's sitting across from me, will share some too. First, I want to talk about the venue. This is actually, for both Greg and I, our first time going to Dingbats. I've known about it for years and years. Friends I have and various bands have played there. Other local bands I'm aware of have played there. And they get a lot of good national acts as well. Case in point, that metal show. Not a huge venue, but kind of nice, cozy. You walk in and you got a decent sized bar and you have a little area there, an area with merch tables, and then you kind of have your pit area and the stage. Stage is raised up like maybe, I don't know, what is that about? Maybe three feet up, four feet up? Not very high up, but pretty cool. I thought the acoustics of the place was pretty decent. If I had to knock anything, and I don't know if this is the usual or just for tonight, but there really wasn't any place to sit. It was standing room only. Just something to bear in mind if you're going there. And again, I don't know if that was just for tonight because it was a really well-packed crowd. I mean, it was, a lot of people there so it's possible that they made a standing room only only because of the capacity of people that were there and they added table we would have been a lot more squeezed as for the acts do you remember the name of the first band so the first band whose name is excuse me at the moment <laughs> Pretty good cover band. If you're into thrash metal, particularly 80s and early 90s thrash metal, then you would love them because that's pretty much what they covered. All the classics, you know, they play Metallica, Anthrax, Pantera. There was an SOD song. That's a nice treat. You don't usually get to see a band play SOD. As a matter of fact, when they were playing SOD, the singer wore this mask, that skull mask, to look like one of the SOD covers. I thought that was pretty cool. Second band was Six Seconds to Mars. But six like spelled like Nikki Six. So I thought that was pretty clever, right? Pretty decent Motley Crue tribute band. They covered the classics uh, kind of right up until we had to step out for a little bit. So I don't know if they actually touched anything from Dr. Feelgood. I know they went as far as the Decade of Decadence because they did cover Primal Scream. But I'm pretty sure that everything they did was from Primal Scream backwards. One thing I thought was funny was that they played Livewire, which if you're a Crew fan, you know that's off the first release. And then to say, okay, now we're going to play an older song. It's like, um, Livewire is the first track on the first album. How are you getting older than that? And and what they ended up playing, I forgot what they played, but I remember it was something off of the second album, off of Shot of the Devil. So, <laughs> but it's okay. It, it's all good. They were a fun performance. I particularly liked the lead guitars. I thought it was really excellent. The drummer was pretty good. Next was Billy Monroe and the Survivors. I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised with them. I didn't know much about them anyway, but wasn't expecting much. I gotta honestly say, up until that point, I felt like that was the band that really had themselves together better. How tight they were, vocals were really on point, performance was really good. They sounded more seasoned than the previous two bands, even though the previous two bands were good. Then, what I feel like is the highlight of the night, band-wise, was Victims of Vengeance, which is Judas Priest tribute band. They covered a lot of areas going from rock and roll all the way up to ram it down. So that was pretty cool. Excellent performance. Quick comment about their performance though. The first couple of songs, it became clear to me that not everybody up on stage could hear each other that well. And that became apparent by a couple of parts of the songs. But as they went, they were requesting the sound man, hey, we need more of this and this monitor, more of that. So once they kind of got that together, then they nailed it. I can tell you right now, Judas Priest is not an easy band to emulate. Like some of their songs are really easy as hell, but a lot of their songs are not easy, especially on vocals and guitar. The dual guitarists, again, once the sound issue was kind of figured out and everybody could hear each other, they played so well together. They were really tight. There are parts of songs where when everybody had to come in together from something, it sounded really full and nice and even. Definitely will see them again. Fun, great set. We had a great time. And as for our esteemed hosts, that metal show, they just kind of came. They were officially the hosts of the party, if you will. They introduced each band, a little bit of banter in between. And during the bands, a couple of them, actually all of them at some point, they went out and mingled among people, said hello. So that was cool. Oh yeah, you know, Don Jameson ran into him a couple of times and he loved this shirt. He was commenting and saying how awesome it was. Time passed, ran into him again. He's telling other people, he sees with the shirt again. He's like, yeah, and he's like pointing out. He goes, oh, look at that guy's shirt. I thought that was pretty cool. They're the same guys that we met separately they really are actually don's almost exactly the same i don't know how long ago it was that we saw him but it was years and he hasn't aged at all his hair got a little bit longer yeah that's it jim and eddie yeah they look good too they look great they all sounded great you hear eddie up there talking introducing bands it's like you listen to him on the radio he's got such an excellent voice excellent radio voice and i'm really glad that we came and i feel like if we have the opportunity to do this again that i'm down for it
that's my take. We're gonna switch over to Greg. Tell us what you thought about the venue first. The venue was really cool. I liked the setup the way it was. It was easy to get around. I liked how the stage was. I liked where the bar was. I wish there was a little bit more seating, but overall, I have no complaints. Everybody was very polite, very nice. Fans played great. It was cool to see those guys mingle around with the fans. Any observations about like the bands or whatever? Any, any oh, the bands things? were great. I really liked all three bands. I thought Billy Monroe was really good. Four bands. Yeah, four bands. Judas Priest Tribute, awesome. Molly Crew Tribute was good. First band was good. For me, it was the ambiance, people around, and of course, mingling, talking to Eddie and, and Don. I wanted to talk to Jim, but I didn't get a chance to. I say overall, it was a fun night. We're definitely gonna go again next year because they do this annually. By chance, do you know, like, how many times have you done this? Like, how many years have they been having this Christmas bash? I wanna say maybe five, six years, maybe eight tops. One of the things that Eddie in particular had pointed out was on stage was that even though the show that ended around, it was, it was 2015, even though the show had ended that long ago, here we are, it's 2023, end of 2023, and the fandom's still going. So I thought that was pretty cool. They got a nice legacy. All three of them, they're still active with their careers and stuff, so it's cool. As always, I want to leave links down below to stuff about that metal show, each of our hosts, information about the bands, the venue, where we're now eating. And also, I want to take a second to say Merry Christmas to everybody that's watching this. Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Appreciate your support. And there's going to be some great stuff ahead for all three channels this coming year. Looking forward to that and looking forward to seeing you all. Also, I really quickly want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and please have a healthy, safe, and fun 2024. It's going to be awesome. I hope everything really works out for the best for everyone. All right. Thanks so much for watching Star Rock. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and stop. Laters. Bye.